This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I did not get a camera stuck up my dick. That must be nice. I played the fuck out of some Factorio. I ordered myself a virtual pinball machine, and we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we also had Gobble Gobble Turkey Day. So, there we, there we go. <sighs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 265 for Thursday, the 3rd of December, 2020. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. Hello, Kent. Happy uh, post-Turkey Day day, 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 po- po- it was like last week. What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on, dude? Uh, we did not have a show last week because it was Thanksgiving. It just so happens it turns it, it, it comes around every year on Thursdays, which is R and P day. Right. It's uh, so we spend time with our families it's instead rude. of instead of our our uh, lovely audience. Um, it was good, man. It was uh, Thanksgiving was good. Yeah. Uh, small. Normally we have a bunch of people over and and do stuff like that. We didn't do that this year. It's a tiny little event. Was it um, just which, you, Steph, and the boys, or? Um. Well, it was the uh, it was the two households, right? Okay. Because we're we're a split household, right? right. So uh, my uh, ex wife and I are co parenting the boys. Well, yep. I mean, uh, one of them is a grown ass man now. But... Basically, y'all are still. Uh, you're not enemies, and therefore, since you live in the same town, you do a lot of family events together. Because exactly, that's yeah, the because boys the boys are. the boys are in both of our houses, so it's basically like it's one household, right? right? So, uh, yeah, so our two households, which we only live a couple blocks away from each other, so it's not like we really traveled. Um, yeah, we did a we did a Thanksgiving together, so it was just the you know our two families uh, getting together. Um, so having such a small gathering. And you still do like a big ass turkey and a big ass ham and all the fixings and all that kind of stuff it means a shitload of leftovers, mm. which is pretty good. <laughs> I love me some some Thanksgiving leftovers. Uh, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of the year. Uh, I mean, you might you, you might not be able to tell from looking at me because I'm a skinny bastard, um, but I eat the shit out of Thanksgiving dinner. Like if, I, if Thanksgiving it's... was every day, I would probably be three times my body weight. Yeah, uh, you don't eat the rest of the year because you stock up on Turkey Day. <laughs> that might be that might be it. Um, we uh we we just had it was my wife and I, uh, my sister in law, our niece, uh, Autumn, Amber, and David, which is our normal household, the seven of us. Maisie uh-huh. brought her boyfriend over, and and uh, Amber brought her boyfriend over. Uh, not we felt it didn't violate the circles, you know, because they're always hanging out with their boyfriends anyway. Uh, right, so they were already in the bubble. Right, right. Uh, so we invited them over. It was the first time we had allowed their boyfriends in the house. They've been dating for several months now. So they, they, uh, both sets of both couples uh, started dating right around uh, 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 Independence Day. So uh, here it is, you know, and and we finally allowed them into the house. They we don't allow non. We don't. We we just don't. Uh, um, it was nice. It was nice. We had a ham. We had a turkey. We had, we didn't get the butterball turkey we usually get. We got a Jenny O turkey, uh, which is the kind you just basically well, typically Jenny O sells like bagged turkeys. So you get like a bagged turkey breast, and you just throw it in there, and you cut. It's a rib cage and two breasts. You know, you, it's really simple, and it's like this easy way to have turkey on a Wednesday night or whatever. So we weren't expecting much of this Jenny O turkey, but it's the only one we could get. It kicked the shit out of every butterball or anything else we've ever had. It was oh, the wow. most delicious fucking turkey I've ever had in do my they come, adult Do they come pre seasoned? No. Okay. Nope. So nope. What, what 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 do you think was the uh, what was the X factor there? What what made it so much better? Honestly, I think it's because we had such low expectations for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Uh, my wife spent a lot of extra time making sure that it was very well taken care of. Hmm. So she, okay. I think it was just the the attention and the TLC during the the roasting. 
Um, oh, okay. But it, it was delicious. Uh, I played sous chef, of course. You know, when my wife wasn't in the kitchen, I was in there making sure things were stirred and padded and, ba- and basted and yeah, all all, all that stuff. So, um, not bad. I mean, I enjoyed it. Got to meet uh, meet my sister in law's boyfriend and my daughter's boyfriend. Like formally meet them, not just confront them at the end of the driveway because they decided to honk their horn and have my daughter walk out to the driveway to them. Um, <gasps> <laughs> that happened. Did I tell you about that? I think I told you about that. Uh, ah, you might have. Yeah. You might have. That, that, that's a very dad moment. You kind of look, look. If if anyone out there, uh, God forbid, wants to uh, date one of my daughters, you better fucking come to the door every time. That's all I'm saying. Like, there's simple <laughs> tokens of respect that I will demand, even if she doesn't. Um, and I'm not afraid. Definitely don't. You definitely don't honk the horn. I That's... yeah no uh I am not afraid to crash a wedding with my fucking pickup truck like don't <laughs> literally crash a yeah. wedding yeah oh, uh so don't 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 step on me son uh I, I may not be able to fight but I'll take it to the death for my kids <sighs> right um yeah absolutely so yeah that was my that was my Thanksgiving and then other than that man I just I've been playing a lot of Factorio have you ever played Factorio no tell me about this okay game. so. You like city building games like uh, uh, City Skylines, Sim City. Um, yeah. yeah. I, how do you feel about 4X games, as in like explore, expand? Uh, you know, it, like Civilization is a good 4X game. Uh, yeah. No, Civilization's fun. Um, yeah. No, I, I like Civilization. I'm. Um, I, I'm also a fan of of RTS games, right? So Age of Empires. Yeah, a lot of crossover yeah. appeal, I think, okay. in those. So, um, yeah, I like that. So take an RTS where typically you're the only player. It's not multiplayer, but it's, you know, you you can do multiplayer. I haven't. I, I don't know that, that if that's a really popular thing. Um, and the storyline is as such. You crash land on a planet. The planet has known hostiles. You have knowledge. You need to escape the planet. Okay. So you have to build a rocket to get off the planet. You need parts for that rocket. All you have are raw materials and a (laughs) pickaxe. So as the name implies, you build a factory step-by-step, component-by-component, assembly line factory while fighting the natives because they don't like pollution and the only thing you have to start off with is coal to burn for energy... Jeez. Yep. They also don't like radiation. So when you find uh, uranium and start doing nuclear power and shit like that, that pisses them off. You pop up a radar because you want to know when they're coming. They can hear that shit and it drives them mad. So that pisses them off. And by the way, you don't have a weapon. So you have to fashion that, which takes parts, which you need to, you know, make machines to do. Right. Right. So everything you do pisses <clears throat> off the natives. Your presence pisses off the natives, and the more more presence you have, the more pissed off they get. <laughs> and here's the other thing. The natives, they start out really weak, but as you pollute, they morph into stronger enemies. The pollution oh, is hyper... Um, uh, uh, not Darwinism, uh, uh, evolutionary. The pollution mm. is hi- hyper-evolutionary for them. So the more you pollute, i.e. the bigger your base gets the stronger the creatures that come at you and the more of them. Oh, geez. Um, so, so this is like the, the, this is a balancing mechanism then because like you cannot just like, like um, uh, develop your way into superiority because they also get stronger as you go. You Yes, you can, but you have to do it very carefully. You have to manage your resources, which it's a resource man- management game is really what it is. Time is a resource because yeah. time is what affects the, the biters. Uh, pollution is a resource that you don't want, but you have to have. Like, you can't not have it. You know, right. I mean, like, there's all the... the and, and there's certain things, like, you would think, okay, well, I can just get the coal and I can get the... the um, the the copper and make a copper sheet and turn the copper sheet into wire use the wire to make a circuit card like i can do all that myself right wrong you have to smelt certain ores in order to make them other things like you have to take iron ore that you can mine with your hands you don't have to build a miner for it which pollutes you can actually do that by hand 
but you can't smelt it in your hands to get an iron sheet. And then you can't take that <laughs> iron and smelt it again to get steel. You know, I hate I hate when I have a sheet and then I have to smelt it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a title there somewhere. Uh, uh, but yeah, so you have to build the factory to get to win the game. And that's where it really becomes interesting is trying to do the resource management. You want to build as big as you can. You want aesthetics. You need functionality. You know, you're building these these conveyor belts but you need parts for their conveyor belts to get the parts to other places. So, mm. you know, mm. uh, world record, any percent is uh, like two and a half hours for a speed run. Oh, wow. uh, world record 100% is six hours, 33 minutes. There's an achievement if you can ro- launch a rocket in under, under eight hours, which is f- not hard to get, but I'm never going to get it. And then you have an entire different class of style of play in which the point isn't, sometimes they don't even have biters turned on and you just want to build the biggest base, most efficient base you can. Okay. Turn, so Sim City at that point. Right. Turn raw ore into as many science units or whatever you're trying to get as you possibly can. Like get that, that science per second up to 300 science being produced per second, which is insane for this game using trains and multi trains and signals and there's logic things that you can do with the little spot it's yeah it, it's basic at, or in depth as you want to get and it's at, at any given time i only have about one science per second happening uh and that's on a good day that's a really good day <laughs> right <sighs> So uh, the game just came out in full release like late this year. It was in it's been in pre pre release beta. I had it at point one seven, then it went to point one eight, and I just never played it because I was like, well, it's fun, but I'll wait till full release. Full release happened. I needed a stress reliever last couple weeks. I decided to install it since it's official one point And holy shit, it is exactly the game that I need, man. It's so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, um, we'll it, probably have a link in the show notes for that. Um, yeah, yeah, you can catch it on Steam, you know. So, I um, so as this audience knows, and as, as you know, Amos, I've got a I've got an arcade machine. Yes. I've got the Legends Ultimate Arcade from At Games, and I love it. Like it's it's the it is the greatest um, home arcade system that exists uh without without um you know just making your own from scratch which you're going to end up spending probably a couple grand to make the machine that you want mm. uh where the or you or you can just, spend a couple hundred dollars and get a single use machine which aesthetically looks nice you know it's, yes like it's yes. great to have a, a miss pac-man cabinet like an authentic miss pac-man cabinet in your yep. studio or whatever but that's just one game. Yeah, exactly. And 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 if you get the arcade one ups, which are really cool, um, but they're not even full size machines, right? So you can spend you know two to three hundred dollars to get a Ms. Pac Man machine, which is really awesome, but it's only like like a three quarter size machine, and it's right. kind of you know you got to like get a riser for it, and you probably still got to like squat to, to. I finally saw one it. in the wild. At Costco, they had, oh, shit, one of the old Atari games, like Yara's Revenge or something like that. It was oh, God damn. Joust. Okay. It might yeah. have been Joust. But, yeah, they, they actually had it in stock, in store, uh, three ninety nine. Yeah, and that's, see, and that's. that's. But like I said, it's like that's a. That's on the high end. Yeah, yeah that's it, the it's high like, end of Well, price. we're in Alaska, though, so they got to make up for their shipping costs. Um, well, yeah, so so uh, Legends Ultimate, for 600 bucks, you you get this full-size arcade machine that right. you can literally do whatever you want. You got 300, well, depending on which version you got, you either got 350 or 300 uh, built-in games, uh, which is a, a pretty sizable library built in, but then you can add whatever the fuck you want. Like, anybody that has watched my... Uh, RMP extra streams, uh, you know, I, I've got like, I've got like every game, uh, whatever is highly moddable. It, it's like, it is the perfect home arcade machine. Um, it's amazing. I can't say enough nice things about it. Uh, they are coming out with a pinball version of 
of their Legends system. So Legends Pinball. Now, is it a, is it a physical ago, pinball or virtual pinball? Well, it's virtual pinball. It's a physical machine, right? So right. It's, it's in the shape of but, a pinball but, but machine. But you don't have a, a four ounce, you know, ball floating around on no, the there's not a there's not a there's not a physical steel ball okay. that you fire okay um it it is all a, a, a virtual system it's an arcade machine but it's in the shape of a pinball machine it's got a real um arcade grade uh plunger mm -hmm. it's got the uh you know the buttons on the side Flappers. like you know all all arcade grade um equipment that's on it, but the instead of having you know a, a sheet of glass with physical components, you know the bumpers, the flippers, and all that sort of stuff, it's all uh, emulated, right? So it's um, um, you know high definition graphics or whatever on um, a um, oh I don't have the probably an LCD screen. Like, well, like yes, a... yes, it is an LCD. It's a uh, so let's see, it's a. Um, it's a 32 inch high definition LCD play field. Uh, so it's, 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 it looks very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Right. So it looks like you're, it, you get, you feel like you're playing pinball, like for real, for real. Right. Yeah. Um, it's got the, uh, it's got force feedback. So it, you, you will feel the, um, you know, the vibration of the table, like as things are happening, just like it, when you're playing a real pinball machine. Yeah. Um, it's also got like, um, um, uh, what is the, uh, what, what am I trying to say? The, um, uh, oh my gosh, what, what is the component that, um, like when my phone knows that I'm moving it, what is that, um, component called? Yeah. yeah. Motion sensing. Yep. Yeah, we'll go with that for now because I can't think of the technical term. But yeah, motion sensing. So like a that's gyroscope? in the table itself. Yeah, it's kind of like a gyroscope. Yeah. So like, but so when you physically nudge the machine, like the 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 system detects that and it incorporates it into the gameplay. So gotcha. So it's it's um, it's just like playing a real arcade machine. Uh, but it, but with the same, all of the same technology and everything as the Legends Ultimate Arcade, where I can add, I can add tables, I can customize it however I want. It's right. like ultra moddable. Um, it's fantastic. They just did the uh, pre-order reservations a couple of days ago. Wow. On on Cyber Monday, actually. And um, I got in, it was uh, 9 p.m. Pacific was the... Uh, the w when it was open to uh, people to to put in the reservation, mm -hmm. I had my confirmation email. This was after because um, you got to put like your credit card information because you had a you had to put twenty dollars down for your reservation. Okay, so you had to put your your uh, credit card information in. You had to put the um, the unit ID number for the equipment that you already have because they they did a staged. Uh, like prior, uh, prioritization system. Yes, a prioritization system. So they they reward customer loyalty because I have one of the first gen machines from them. Um, if I put my user ID in there, then that that allows me to be in phase one of gotcha. the pre orders, right? And they did it in well, they called it wave one, first wave, whatever. So they did three waves, right? So the first wave was first gen owners and then second wave was second gen equipment owners right and then the third wave was literally everyone else gotcha right and, but the so a first gen owner was able to get in there at 9 a.m uh this was on monday so cyber monday uh first gen owners were able to get in at 9 p.m or 9 a.m pacific time uh, which was 10 a.m. my time, and mm -hmm. I was teleworking at the time, so I was sitting. I was already at my my personal computer, and um, anyway, so I received my confirmation thank you email at 9:02 <laughs> Pacific time. Um, so I'm pretty confident that I'm going to get one of these things before the end of the year, hopefully by Christmas. Oh, uh, I am super stoked. Uh, they so they get their stock from the factory on. I think they're expecting it on the 13th of December. 
Okay. And they're going to process the, and it's a first come, first served, you know, by by, uh, by, by wave. wave or by yeah. tier. Yeah. And um, man, I got it in there so fucking fast. Uh, but I know that the 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 hype in the community, that like in the home arcade community, was like at peak level, <laughs> and literally thousands of people were getting in on this thing. So I don't know if I'm going to be like in the top ten. But I'm pretty confident that I'm in the top 100 or so. So depending on how many uh, stock items they actually get to their warehouse on right. December 13th, um, I might be in that very first shipment. So I'm eagerly watching my inbox to, so to see. We, we've been meaning to have Sergeant Muffin on the show again. Oh, yes. Talk to him just yes. this week about it. Uh, if this is how it's going to go, then what we need to do is you need to hold back your, 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 uh, like say you get it, say it arrives on the, the 20th, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you need to hold back your review on that, at least for the show until we can get Sergeant Muffin on because he's a huge pinball fan. Yes, 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 yes. Famously. Yes. Dan is a huge pinball nerd. So that, that'll, that'll, that'll be the... the so, that, that'll be the impetus for us to get him on the show to talk about your new I, machine. I actually asked him before about how he feels about virtual pinball, and he was lukewarm at best. Yeah. He's a big fan of the physical machines, like the actual real deal original machines. Right. Uh, which I don't blame him. So, but once you've had some play time, you might be able to counter. I don't know. It could be a good conversation. So we'll we'll plan on that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll I'm around. looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to have Sergeant Mush Muffin back on the show, especially to talk about pinball. Uh, Sergeant Mushroom. Um, speaking of mushrooms, I, <laughs> I I had a procedure done today. A procedure. A procedure. Like, um, so like a procedural, um, like what are we talking about? Like, like it's a procedure. So like, let's walk us through step by step. What is uh, step one of the procedure? Step one is to pee in a cup. Pee in a cup. Okay. Um, all right. That could be that could be the first step for many things. It'd be yep. a drug test for employment. Yep. It could be um, maybe you have a kidney infection. Maybe. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, you want to see if you're pregnant because you missed your period. Right. And I've been missing my periods for years. So, but right. That, that right. could be. Okay. That could be. Okay. So then what? Uh, um, next step after that was I mean, we're, we're skipping all the normal clinical stuff, getting your blood pressure and all that kind of stuff. Next step after that was removing all my clothing from the waist down. Okay. So, all right. So this could be, um, this could be like um, a porno, right? So, like, um, hey, hey, I'm delivering your pizza, or I'm here to fix your sink. Um, and then not, the not, next not, not, a, not, a, not a porno, not a porno. No, no. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, you removed uh, the lower half of your of your clothing. Um, maybe. Um, oh, oh, you're at Meps. You're about to join the military, and the doctor needs to examine your balls. Uh, to make sure that you don't have uh, testicular cancer. Closer. Okay, okay. All right, well, uh, ne what's the next? The, the next step would be to get an injection of lidocaine into the urethra. Okay, this sounds this sounds awful. Um, so lidocaine, I don't, I'm not familiar with that substance, but, but cane at the end makes me think that it's a pain killer it's it, it is a pain reducer okay um wow okay so you get now where wait wait wait, wait. so where where did this shot uh go it was this like a shot directly into your dick uh, it, it was a so you know like the syringes for like jello shots you get the syringes and squeeze through <laughs> Imagine yeah. that, but that was on the end of the like in, like the tip of that went to the urethra. There's no needle; it was just that, and then just <laughs> with lidocaine up like, your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. my God. All right, so it's like peeing except reverse. <laughs> it's it's reverse peeing lidocaine. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, thank God it was a pain suppressant, but it, 
It didn't help. <laughs> it's, not gonna, it's not instantaneously work. Like, like while it's going up your dick, you're feeling that. Yes. And it, it, it wasn't painful. It just felt like pressure. Like, it felt like something was trying to escape my dick because it literally was. Pressure. Like, you might feel a slight pressure. That means it's going to hurt. Uh, and then and then pinch off the dick with a little clamp, which uh, was not fun to hold the lidocaine in because he just wants to come out like pee. Oh, right. Okay. All right. So they, they injected your dick hole and then clamped your dick hole. Yes. And then okay. made me lay there for about 15 minutes. All right, so were were you at like a like a BDSM madam? Like were you like you you subjected yourself no, to this? Th- th- this this into it or uh, first of all, I'm more of a sadist than a masochist, so I would have been on the wrong end of that deal if that were the case. And <laughs> okay. second of all, this was fully sanctioned by my wife. In fact, she insisted I go. Oh God. Okay. Um. So now I'm fearing for your health. Because what would what would cause you to subject yourself to such a uh, procedure? It, it was so. So the next step after that was to come. In, the doctor came in the room. They had a camera, uh, and they took the clamp off. They stuck the camera all the way into my bladder, which was not fun. Mm. To check for issues, they didn't find any, which was good. So yeah, got a camera shoved up my dick today, like earlier today, which is why I didn't want to get up to get the peach schnapps during the pre-show because I'm already sitting down. <laughs> Holy fuck! Okay, um, what was the what was the concern that prompted this? Uh, there's some some medical issues that I have going on that uh that that have indicated that there might have been something wrong with my bladder. Uh, all the okay. easy, all the easy stuff was ruled out. Uh, the cats, yeah, the cat scan and uh, the urine test and all that stuff. And they were like, okay, well, we're gonna have to go actually look. And that's what they did today, and everything looks good. So uh, this is like this is taking dick pics to the next level, dude. Right, right, like, like yeah, literally the next level. <laughs> um, oh man. All right. Well, so I'll be. Yeah, it's it's it'll be uncomfortable for the next couple of days as everything heals up. Um, he he starts going in and is like, okay, this isn't so bad. And he goes, okay, here's the because uh, uh, you can feel it going, but you don't know where that where it's at because there's no high definition nerves down there or anything. Um, and uh, he stops, and I'm thinking, oh, that wasn't bad at all. That lidocaine worked fucking wonders. And then he goes, oh, here comes. Okay, well, here comes the bad part. And then he told me, twitch your toes or grunt, but please don't bear down. The only thing okay. your body wants to do is bear down. <laughs> it's not You're trying to have that baby. Right, right. Um, so yeah, that was that was my day today. I don't uh as I told you via text, uh two out of five stars would not recommend. Yeah, I'm surprised you gave it two stars. Like, why, why, uh, why the second star? I mean, if they'd found cancer or something like that, that would have been a one star experience. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Because then you got emotional turmoil along with the physical discomfort. So, gotcha. No, you know, that makes like, sense. like it's two stars because it could have been worse. Right. All right. Well, fuck, dude. Yeah. Thanks for making all of us uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they like it's well, no matter how uncomfortable we got. <laughs> We can rest assured that you were more uncomfortable today. <laughs> I the, the 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 lady that was that was doing the prep work and everything else. She was like, "Yeah, from what I hear, it's it's like a uh, it's like a catheter. Have you ever had a catheter?" I was like, "No." <laughs> uh, and then the doctor comes in. And he's like, Do you "Have any any concerns?" And I was like, "Yeah, my wife didn't like getting a catheter when she was giving birth, and that tube goes straight." My tube doesn't. It does like a little <laughs> little S turn. He's like, yeah, it's a little bit more of a difficult route, but I've studied Google Maps, so we should be good. Oh, God damn it. Oh, a doctor with a sense of humor. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Okay, so all that is to say, this is the worst part. I'm laying there, prepped up. The The lidocaine is, is done. We're waiting for the doctor to come in with the scope. 
And my wife sends a message to the family saying that she's on her way home from work. She does this by sending an emoji, the home emoji, to the family chat. Mm. I thought I'd be smart and send the Dr. Eggplant cameras emoji. Because oh, I was at the doctor, like the hospital, to get my my dick cameraed. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I, there was no room for me to put my phone, so my phone was with my clothes over on the counter. So all I had was my watch, and apparently the 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 hospital icon that I tried to send didn't go through. And as soon as I tapped the eggplant emoji, it went through. So. <laughs> So the whole family was like grossed out because I'm sending eggplant emojis to the family chat. And of course, ah. since it was only a single emoji, <clears throat> since it was only a single emoji, it was the large size emoji in the chat. Oh my God. Giant eggplant. Yep. You're welcome, family. Right. Oh, so the damn, whole dude. fucking family just fell out dying that's great good job you did good <sighs> yeah <sighs> yeah oh man well hey i i feel like we need to change the subject um what, what you got what you got on a macbook pro oh speaking of small things <laughs> all the Small things. Do you know what this is? That looks like a... Well, I can't tell for sure. It looks like a memory module, maybe. This is the Wi-Fi card from my MacBook Pro. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, okay. I, up, memory. I upgraded it. So now I have Wi-Fi uh, 802.11ac in my 2011 MacBook Pro, and I have Bluetooth 5, which means I can unlock my fucking MacBook Pro with my watch. Oh, badass! Coolest but thing you ever. You had previously a, a, a 802.11G. No, 802.11N. N. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's all right. So it, it's it was neighbor. it was Bluetooth 4.0, okay. which doesn't have the anyway. It's pretty fucking Got cool. You. Like I can just open my MacBook now and it just blah, blah, unlocks automatically. It says unlock it with your watch, and then I get a little notification on my watch brilliant. saying your MacBook Pro unlocked with your watch. It's it's fucking brilliant. That alone was worth the 30 minutes to replace it and $45 to buy it. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. That's hell yeah. That's money and time well spent. That's yeah. freaking great. Yeah. And, and the replacement was super simple. I was worried about it because, you know, MacBooks, they're notoriously not repairable. And yeah. no, it was super fucking simple. Yeah. There are certain components that, that usually are, are pretty fucking easy to get to. But you want to do anything outside of that. Yeah. Well, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know what can't go fuck themselves are our patrons. <laughs> I was going to say a good use of your time and money is to go <laughs> to patreon.com slash ritual misery. I like your intro better, but I'm going <laughs> but I'm going to stick with mine. Um, <sighs> what will people find when they go to patreon.com slash ritual misery? Uh, early release episodes, they'll find the pre-show and post-show. They'll find uh, some stuff in the vault, old videos, and early episodes that never made it to air, such as beta That's... 3, 4, 5, 6. No, 3, 4. 3, 4. Yeah, I guess it's just 3, 4. Oh, uh, yep. Alpha 1 might be in there. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also but but there's also things that um like that aren't even RMP episodes predates RMP by a long shot. Yeah. Um well, you can find those things in there. It, re it predates the podcast but not the concept of ritual misery. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um you if you want to see what Amos and I looked like when we were like 19. babies basically. <laughs> yeah, which is babies. L less than <laughs> half our age now. Yeah. Um, Back when we could yeah, grow, there, we could grow a single mustache hair between us. And when we when, <laughs> when we when we f discover footage from the past, like we this is where we put it. We give it to the patrons before we, if we reveal it to anybody else. Yep. Um, it definitely goes to the patrons before it goes anywhere else. Uh, we've also got exclusive interviews in there. We've got um, 
all kinds of craziness in there, yep. man. We, there's also there's also like reward tiers and and stuff. And merch. Like if you subscribe at the ten dollar a month level, after three months you get exclusive Patreon only yeah. stickers. That's right. Yeah. Well, for this month, it's stickers. No, no, no. That's that's what it is. If you if for 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 at the ten dollar level for three months, you get stickers as your reward, and that's that's for everybody. Got it. The that's right. The next item up, well, yes, and we will be we'll be we'll be changing out the sticker uh, regularly, so you won't always get the same stickers, and they will all they will all be patron exclusives. Now, if you want a patron exclusive hoodie, it's only going to go to the first person or the first group of people. The first month that it is issued will be the last month it is issued. Ah, yes. Well, yeah. Uh, the first month that it is issued will be the last month that we will take people at that tier with that reward. So anybody that's, that is at that level at the time that the first one is issued, they will continue to get their fulfillment. But after that, it'll be gone forever. Patron exclusive sweaty sweatshirt. Uh, <laughs> sweaty. At, yeah. I think I want to get my RMP sweaty on. I think it's at the $30 a month level. Yeah. Um, that's crazy, but also it's exclusive and, and limited time. So, yeah. Um, how yeah, check how it out. limited like, you'll have to decide. Yeah. So anyway, check it out. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. you find out all the, all the levels, all the things, all the things you, that you could get. It's yep. all over there. Uh, go check it out. We appreciate any patron at any level. Um, definitely check it out. Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Yep. And new merch at the merch store, RitualMisery.com. Yep, yep, yep. Get a pillow. <laughs> uh, you won't be the first one. You won't. It <laughs> has a pillow. <laughs> there are pillows in the world. I've got shipment notifications for them. Uh, there, somebody out there in the world right now has a pillow with our faces on it. I need I need a I need a, a stinger. Oh, I thought you were gonna say I need a selfie with our pillow, <laughs> which would be pretty amazing. But instead, I would love to see that. This won't be as amazing, but let's do this instead. What time is it? Ken, he's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! This week's game is called You Gotta Know the D to Get the D. Okay. So when uh, when I made this game, the only thing that I knew we were going to talk about was your dick. So I made the game based around the theme of your dick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I don't know a lot about your dick in particular, so I made this generally about the human dick. Uh, so I'm going to ask you 10 questions that are about the human penis. Okay. So people see, we'll see what you know about the human dick. All right, uh, let's go right into it. Your first question. The average male orgasm lasts how many seconds? Four, six, 10 or 15. The average male orgasm lasts such a shitty question. Um, I'm going to go yeah. four, six, 10 or 15 are your choices. I'm going to go 10. You're going to say 10 and boo, you're wrong at six seconds. Uh, that was my second choice. Yeah. Males get the shit into the stick when it comes I, to uh, I have link. a I have a problem with that question though, because uh, like when when uh, I've never had an orgasm gone in six seconds, like that's never been yeah, a thing. It, it, well, but the 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 rush of chemicals that you can sense at the moment of, or- of orgasm doesn't last mm-hmm. very long, but the actual 
uh, physiological reaction to the orgasm and the, the, the muscle spasms and shit like that carries on longer than that. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is, is well, yeah, because exactly. I mean, because you've got you've got ejaculation, right? Which is which is an essential part of the the male orgasm. Um, but then there's also yeah, there's also like the sensations that follow and and well right. coincide with and then follow and everything else. Right, the oxytocin release um, or whatever. Yeah, and all of that. Like there's a whole uh, yeah. uh, psychological side and everything else. But I think it's the where they get the six seconds, I think, is the the uh, the measurable physiological response. I think is where they get the six. Yeah, we're we're just going um, to agree to disagree with the question on that one, but I do believe you're right on that six seconds. Yeah, and the um, the uh, so by contrast to the uh, six seconds, a woman's average uh, uh, orgasm is twenty three seconds. That seems long, dude. That's what she said. All right, your second question. The average erect penis is about how many inches? 5.7, no, 5.825. Okay, so I'm going to give you four your four choices, Okay. right? So you can round up, round down, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, your choices are three, four, five, or six, six inches. The average erect penis. Six. You say six. I'm sorry. You're so close. It's five uh, because the uh, the average, scientifically measured average is 5.17 inches. That's. Which is closer to five. That's. Okay. Hmm. See, I wish I had my soundboard here. I feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> right? As do we all. As <laughs> do we all. All right. Um, you know, I, I actually... Wait, hold on. Before we move on. I have not actually taken a ruler or tape measure or anything to my dick since I was 16 or 17. So I really have no News idea. Flash, Kent, your dick at 16 or 17 is peak dick. Like, it's never going to be that anything so again. So it's smaller now than it was then. I, I would I would wager. Oh, wow. Well, okay, so I feel worse now. Okay. <laughs> Question three. <laughs> Question three. True or false? Height is related to penis size, meaning a man's height is related to his penis size. It seems like the common answer would be true, so I'm going to assume that it is false and then argue it vehemently. So your submitted answer is? False. Damn! I was hoping you were going to go the other way. It is true. There is a correlation between a man's height and his penis size. See? So a man that is seven foot tall is going to have a bigger dick than a man who's five feet tall. Uh, on average. On average. If you, if you, ha- if you take a hundred men that are seven feet tall and a hundred men that are five feet tall... You're going to get bigger dicks on the seven feet. You're going, you're going to get longer dicks. Well, right. All right. Um, okay. True or false? Big feet equals big penis. Well, see, here the problem lies with the previous question. Taller people have bigger feet on average. So if taller people on average, have longer dicks than people with longer feet or bigger feet would, on average, have longer dicks. Hmm. It's the correlation thing. That's that's the part that's stumping me here. So I'm going to say true because the last one was true, and you're going to tell me it's false, and I'm going to argue vehemently. <laughs> so your submitted answer is? True. <laughs> it's false. Told you. It's bullshit. <gasps> so that's not necessarily a... a so... Scientific correlation, uh, there is a correlation between height and dick length, but not uh, foot size and dick length. Because feet size, 
there is more, uh, like, I, I guess more greatly um, amongst men of the same height than, than dick size. Uh, I've got a, a episode of 99% Invisible for you to listen to, but I will submit that you have answers in front of you and the uh, the, the, the checks will be in well, the mail on the show notes. So Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not saying this is, this is I'm, I'm not like, I'm not consulting like science itself. Um, I I do have a source. Yeah. Howstuffworks.com. Um, Howthepenisworks.com. It's uh yeah it's um um dicktrivia.com no I'm just kidding. Um I'm I'm curious if that's a real thing. Um but okay. All right. So your next question. Mm-hmm. Semen contains about how many calories? Per your choices per milliliter, per ejaculate, per what? Um like like a a load. Per, load. per ejaculate, okay, uh, or per ejaculation. Yeah. Uh, give me, give me, okay. give me the suggestions here. So, so your your choices are one to seven, eight to fifteen, sixteen to twenty three, twenty four to thirty one. C, sixteen to twenty three. Sixteen to twenty three. Man, no, it's actually there's not a whole lot of nutritional value there. It's uh it's a one to seven hmm. calories. That makes it diet food. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So well anyway, I'm not gonna go any further with my thought. <laughs> uh, your next question. Now, this one granted, um, I don't know when the the date of this data and I don't know where they actually got this data. So we're going to just going to go with what this quiz is presenting uh, because I did steal uh, these questions. So, um, so I don't know how accurate this one is either. How big is the world's largest penis? And this is in length. How long is the world's largest penis? Human penis or mammalian penis? Human. These are all about the human penis. Um, Every part the human penis. I'm going right. to go with something absurd. Okay, go, go, go ahead and give me the answers. I've got a number in my mind. We'll match up the closest one to that. Okay, well, I'm curious because I'm going to read what's on the paper. Um, tell me what, what's in your brain. Uh, in my brain is something like 13 or 17 inches. Like it's absurdly large. 13 or 17? Yeah. That's a range. Okay. Uh, it's an right, odd. It's an odd number in the teens. Gotcha. Okay, so your choices are in inches: twelve point four, thirteen, thirteen point five, or fifteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yep. It's actually thirteen point five. Damn! I almost went that one too. So the, the record at the time of, of this uh, recording was 13.5 inches long and 6.25 inches in circumference. That's, that's a fucking mon- that's a monster cock. Uh, that, 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 mm, that's not usable. That's uh, <laughs> oof, it's uh, well, it's an oddity. Let's just. <laughs> Um, that's a lot of meat. All just, right. Just uh, imagine, imagine, imagine if they were a shower, not a grower. They just had to walk around with a third fucking leg all the time. Dude. No. It's like a crutch that like they can just like lean forward and <laughs> just, just do cock pushups. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so much material here. Uh, that's what she said. Okay. Um, the next one, number seven, true or false. The penis is a muscle. False. It's a spongy tissue. That is um, 100% accurate, what you just said. Um, yes. Uh, it The answer is false. It is, in fact, a spongy substance and not really a muscle. Uh, there's some mus- musculature at the base of the penis, which, like, allows you to, like, kind of, like, you know, make it's, it jump and whatnot. It's called the pelvic floor, and it happens in everybody. 
Yeah, and you, but yeah, it's not Kegels. a muscle because if it was a muscle, you would be able to like it'd be prehensile at that point. Right. Like you'd be able to like, <laughs> hold objects. You'd be able to write with your. Penis. It'd be an ex- it'd, it'd be it'd be a fucking elephant trunk, which we just talked about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. All right. Number eight. Which country has a festival each year in celebration of the penis? Oh shit! This is one of those Nordic countries. It's like uh, Iceland or uh, Norway or some shit like that. It's up there somewhere. Well, um, maybe if, Scandinavian. If you, the, if you can guess it before your before your choices are given to you, I will give you two points. I, so, I would go with Iceland uh, then. You're gonna go with Iceland? Ah, damn. Okay, let me give you your choices. All right. Uh, the question once again is which country has a festival each year in celebration of the penis? Your choices are Japan, France, the Netherlands, or Australia. The Netherlands. You are going to go with the Netherlands, and you'd be wrong. Of course. It is Japan. I kind of thought that, but they kind of celebrate everything over there. So. Yeah, so so translated, uh, their their festival is called... The Festival of the Steel Phallus, and it's celebrated every year on April 6th. My birthday. Yeah, which is why I included this trivia here. Uh, It started in the 17th century as Uh. prostitutes praying for protection from STDs. Uh, But today, it's, it's an event for AIDS awareness. Wow! But like they still like um, they have displays of like like uh, penis Phallus. statues. Uh, I'm just gonna say, Kent, that I might be a dick, but you're a douche. <laughs> All right. Question number nine: How many <laughs> erections does the average male have each night? Seven. So when I say each night, this this means during sleep, right. like while you're sleeping. Um, you're you're gonna just spitball seven. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give you your choices. <laughs> uh, there's only three. There are only three choices actually. So you might stick to your to your original thing. Um, but uh, your choices are so. Once again, the question is: How many erections does the average male have each night? And this, and this means during sleep, right? So each uh, sleep period, how many erections does the average male have each night? One to two, three to five. Or six to seven? Six to seven. It's actually three to five. Of course it is. <laughs> uh, I've been off by one this entire fucking time. Yeah. And th- did you know, like, it, it, if you died by hanging, you would get a, um, it's, it, what is it called? It's called a, uh, uh, de- oh, fuck. There's, there's a name for it. It's like a death erection, death, death hard on, death. Death boner. I can't remember what it's called. Is that because but if you of the, the by hanging? Is that because of the blood, or is there like mixed signals? Or... Yeah, it's like a it, well, it's like a it's the constriction of the of the blood. Mm. Like if if you're hung, <laughs> if you're hung, <laughs> dun, 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 like Shh. your dick gets hard, like as you're dying, like it's crazy. It's weird. Um, there's actually there's a few other afflictions I was reading about that does the same thing. Like poisoning is actually one of them. Um, but anyway, all right, dude, your final question. And this is a, this is a ratio question. All right. One in how many, one in how many men are able to give themselves a blow job? Oh, I'm going to need to see the ratios on this. All right. <laughs> All right, so there's a obviously a very small percentage of us are able to actually put our mouths on our dicks. Uh, but it's it's one in how many? All right, is it uh, one in four hundred? No. One in eight hundred, one in a thousand, no. or one in twelve hundred? How many men? Based on able- the number of men that I've met and who I think might be handling their own cocks uh, with their own mouths on a regular basis, I would say it's pretty high, but I'm going to go with 1 in 1,200 instead. You're going to go with 1 in 1,200, which you which which is the highest one in our list here, but do you think it's actually higher? 
It's the lowest uh, one in the list, but. Well, so your choices again are one in 400, one in 800, one, one in, in 1,000, one in 1,200. You're going with 1,200? Yep. Uh, the actual answer is one in four hundred. It was higher. See, yeah. So that's like a what is that? A quarter of one percent. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's still like super low. Uh, man, you you didn't get the D, bro. Uh, like no. Hoping, no, my D's broken. I was hoping. Yeah. So you don't know you don't know the D enough to get the D apparently. Well. That does happen. I mean, actually, this is actually one of the poorest performance that I've I've seen from you. Like, uh, why is your D performance so? Oh wait a minute, hold on. We're still waiting on results from uh, from the doctor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got a doctor's oh, excuse this week for not getting the D. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Oh shit. Okay. All right, man. Um, that was fun. Yeah. In our uh, in our pre-show today, we uh, we were drinking Jägermeister. <laughs> we we were drinking Jägermeister and making mixed drinks and shooters and all kinds of craziness in the pre-show, and it got me thinking about like where I've consumed alcohol in mass quantities in the past because Jägermeister has not been a part of my life and. Quite a while, <laughs> uh, and and it's very much correlated with memories of like you know going out with my friends and having a good time and in pubs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about like where I've really enjoyed drinking before because there's some like there's some shithole places that you've just like gone and got a shot or a beer or something or maybe both. Uh, but there's been some places that that we really enjoy going back to uh, for various reasons. And so I want to talk about like what our favorite watering holes in our lives have been. Okay. Uh, you and I have been like all over the planet. Well, Northern hemisphere. Anyway, we've right. been all over the Northern hemisphere and uh, there's some really, really great places to consume alcoholic beverages with friends and uh, I was really curious about what some of your favorite places was. And I'd, I'd like to share a story or two about some of my favorite places. Um, I, so my favorite place to drink that I've ever drank was the Hooch at Kunsan. That was going to be my guess, actually. That is just, is just the perfect, the perfect... So perfect environment is people that I trusted people that I, uh, I knew not necessarily people that I worked with but people that I was around consistently and it was a great place to go I didn't even drink there all that often like not all the time anyway so, uh, so before, hold on before you go on to describe it um, uh, explain what that means so a lot of people will hear the hooch and kunsan and has no idea what you're talking about so explain what that even means every well I don't say every unit most uni units most military units in at Kunsan Air Base in Korea, have their own bar. It's a self-funded bar. It's technically donations, although that's that. Well, at the least at the time. Not every three months, the rules change on on how you can it, collect payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it was an enforced donation. Um, yeah. But uh, it self ran, and then the money that left was left over. The revenue from the place would go into squadron events to hold for morale and do cookouts and awards and things like that. And uh, it was just, it was yeah. Meanwhile, uh, the the AMXS hooch that that uh, I was part of, um, it was anything goes as far as people decorating, writing on the walls, all that kind of stuff. As long as you didn't destroy the equipment or take away functionality. Uh, it's kind of anything goes. So it was just yeah. So so for for those that don't know, AMXS means Aircraft Maintenance Squadron. So for the um, for the folks that that turned a wrench on an airplane, uh, this was this was their their like home home pub basically yes. on on uh, Kunsan Air Base. Yep, and you had the MXS hooch, the maintenance squadron. So yes. not. It, so it's not the on aircraft, it's the off aircraft. 
off aircraft maintenance. So, right. yep. Um, so yeah. what was your favorite watering hole? So the, 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 my favorite place to drink of all time that I've ever been in my life was this place called the Speicher Hof, uh, which, uh, was the local pub in my town in Germany. So I lived in Germany for five years. Right. And the, the pub that was closest to me both uh, geographically, like physically closest to me, but also closest in my heart was a place called Speicher Um Every every village in Germany pretty much has a Hof, which which basically it, so it's H O F, right? So it basically means like um, like the center, like the gathering place, right? The house of family, house of fun, house of fuckles. Yeah, you know what? House of family, like I. Or House of Fun works as well, but House of Family, like that's that that fits, dude. Like that's coincidentally works. Um, uh, so the the village that I lived in in Germany was called Speicher, and the Speicher or Hof, like that means like the you know the gathering place in Speicher, and it was uh, uh, the most wonderful. Like I felt like Norm when I walked in there, you like Norm from Cheers, right? Yeah. So I would walk into that place and it didn't matter if it was just the, the barkeep was the only person there or if there were 30 people there, like patrons and whatnot. Um, I would walk in there and anytime the door opens and closes, everybody looks at the door, right? Hmm. And when I would walk in, like everyone would look at me, Kent! Like it was just like, oh, I was just immediately welcome. Um, it was just, it was wonderful. And in fact, I actually, uh, joined the dart league, the, the bar league, uh, dart team for that establishment. And, uh, I met so many wonderful people through, through that, uh, the, um, uh, the quiz nights that we used to host years and years ago, uh, that's where we would do it is there at the Spicer Hof. Um, that is like, I love everybody, like every memory that I have associated with that place is treasured. Like mm. it is far and above my favorite place on this planet to drink. Unfortunately, I've heard that it's closed now. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, in my heart, that is the greatest place on this planet to drink. Nice. Um, this is where I run into problems. I've never been much of a bar hopper in the bars that I did go to. I went to and I didn't necessarily have fond memories of it. It was mostly because they were really quiet, run down hole in the walls that I had like the bar to myself for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, what's on tap and what's on tap two, depending on the night in, in Bossier and uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, were my places my would be next to my list. They were both owned by the same people. That's why it's what's on tap and what's on tap too. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it, 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 depending on what night it was, I'd go to, cause I knew which one was busy and I would just go to the other one and mm-hmm. I knew all the staff. It was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like the Spicer Hof or Hof. It, it was more like they knew I just wanted to be left the fuck alone and have a couple beers and be on my way. And mm. I really respect that. And if I came in with, with friends, they, you know, they came over and, and greeted them and stuff like that. But it wasn't like, there was not a fond memories. It was a very morose time of my life, but it was the perfect place just to not, not be drinking alone in my apartment. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that would be next on my list. But after that, I kind of failed to find anywhere that I've had any significant memories and could call a favorite other than, what my favorite was this week. It was that bar at, at all, <laughs> you know, like, it, like I didn't really. Yeah. So, so my, se- my second submission would be also from Korea and I'm not going to use the, I'm not going to use the same, even though I have very fond memories of, of the, um, uh, the AMXS hooch. Um, I'm going to say the Las Vegas club in a town. Yeah. Uh, near Kunsan air base. Um, I, I've got 
hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of 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 really good memories of um of that location i i I don't think a town even exists anymore the buildings are Uh, still there yeah but all the businesses are shut down businesses yeah so uh no um, las vegas is a cool club like you you walk in there you rub the uh the statue's boob and go in there on the big screen yes Yes, we used to just slap the boobs on the statue as we walked in. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the, the, yeah. there is a bare breasted mermaid thing. It wasn't, it wasn't really a mermaid. It was like, a, I, I don't know. I think um, it was a mermaid. Was it a mermaid? I think it was a mermaid. I think it was a mermaid. Uh, but yeah, and then they had a huge screen in there, like a projector screen, and they'd play mm. dirty videos and shit, like porn video, porn music videos. Very um, well. When I was there, it was very rarely like X-rated. It was usually just like music videos, like the hot music videos of the day. Oh, it, we we would go in there and we it, it would just flip a script. Uh, oh. if if See, we if we were there when I was there, like like we took uh, that shit over. It, it was Should Weapons be, Bar when I was there yeah. too. But when I walked in, that's all they would play was the the porn music. Because um, uh, uh, I just yeah. carry that kind of air with me, I guess. <laughs> it, well, it, they did it a couple times, and then I took my wife in there when she came to Korea, and I had them, had had them do that so that she could see that when she was there. And from that point on, they knew that I had brought my wife into their club to drink soju and watch porn. Um, so, <laughs> so they, I just I'd walk in as soon as as soon as they see me, they'd be like, "Obi, okay," and within a couple songs, it'd be uh, Ben Benassi. The porn version, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, that that would happen on occasion. Like it was a rare occasion though when I when I was going to to the Las Vegas club. They um, they had desensitized but, yeah. their, their themselves by the time I got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I like uh, the uh, Mama San and Papa San, which we we talked about that in this in past episodes. It was mm. it's weird that Americans call them Mama and you know Mama San and Papa San. Because those are more like Japanese terms, and the Koreans and the Japanese aren't um, necessarily on speaking terms. Um, but the but the um, f- familiar terms, Mama San and Papa San, uh, for the like the, you know the barkeeps and whatnot, um, like they they accept those terms. And uh, but yeah, Mama and Papa, like I really I, I really like them. Um, at the Las Vegas Club, assuming it was the same, uh, the the same uh, folks that run it. Um, Papa used to take uh, me and one of my friends on on excursions on the weekends. Like we would go either to some like uh, low key, uh, uh, like genuine Korean restaurant, mm. uh, or uh, one time we went to a theme park. Which um, the whole time I was there, like I had a good time while I was there, but the whole time I was just thinking like. OSHA would fucking have a shit fit yep. here. Yep. <laughs> like it was like there's no guardrails. Like you could you could literally walk into the path of a roller coaster and die. Uh guardrails. The, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The uh uh was it Latte World? We went there and mm. holy shit. Like y- that yeah. that place was set up in such a way that someone could die and they wouldn't even shut the ride down, let alone the park. Yep. Like yep, yep, they, yep, yep. they were just like, yeah, uh, we'll clean that up after hours. Everybody else continue on. Like yep. rides yep, are not absolutely. safe, but they were so yep. fun. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So Papa San took me there. Um, uh, the uh, um, uh, height brewery tour mm-hmm. and the uh, the mountain climb thing that mm-hmm. I did. Like like uh, Papa San was like behind uh, setting up all of that kind of shit. That's cool. Uh, so it was awesome. And then like Mama San, like when I was leaving Korea, like like she cried and like she made me a gift and like gave me a gift on my way out. And like they're just like the sweetest, like most awesome people. Um yeah, I've got I've got really, really, really good memories. Plus of- Las Vegas is a club where you go out a door, climb down some stairs, turn a corner go to the very end of that hallway with no other doors, by the way, until the very end, and then there's three doors. All three of them are bathrooms. Only two of them have anything on the other side of the door. One of them is literally just open it, and there's practically a ladder going about 40 feet down. And if you're drunk, 
that door is not the door you choose. So, see, it's funny that you say because I think something something changed because when I was there, so the where we'd go pee was on the same level, but the door where the stairs would be literally just opened up to jungle. <laughs> and if you walked out that door, you would be walking probably to your death. Yeah. You would probably fall about two to three stories into jungle. <laughs> Yep. Where if you didn't die, um, you might be it's wishing you had. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be bad. Um, yeah, yeah so and there was no guardrail. There was nothing. No. Like most of the time, the door was just open. Yep. So and you most, just, most of like, the time, you knew that was the wrong door because there was a dude pissing in the hallway, and you're like, "Why isn't the floor wet?" Oh, because he's pissing out the wind, out the door. Yep. Just, yeah, yeah. Just that, in, that totally he's different. pissing out the door into the clouds, like because that's how high you felt. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like seriously, dude. Yeah. Um, crazy times, man. Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, that's, that's a few of our, our favorite watering holes around the world in our, yeah. in our past. Some of them may exist. Some of them may not. So one in the South, Southern U S one in Germany and two in Korea, that should tell you something. Uh, that's kind of, that, that's, that's, that's a setup right there. Yeah, there's some there's some cool bars in the U.S., but uh, show me show me some that are better than, uh, the, than those. The international problem ones. is, and even with with what's on tap, it wasn't the fact that it was a bar; it's the fact that I could break the rules. The rules didn't apply to me because I was there so often. So they wouldn't right. close the bar down. I didn't need to leave until they were locking the door after cleaning up. Right. Well, th- I mean, that was like the hooch as well. Like there were oh. many a times that I stayed after hours at the hooch. I, I I was the key master at the hooch, so I just came and went whenever the fuck I wanted. <laughs> right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you want to go have some Which drinks? After hours at the hooch was the best time to be at the hooch because yeah. there'd be only like eight people there, and I, they'd just break out the bottles, and it, you get smoke in there. <laughs> it was it, it was it was uh, uh, find a mop or find the door. And yep. the only rule after hours was if you fuck somebody on the on the pool table, you have to do it with people around so we can all join. Uh, we can we can all watch the fun. <laughs> join, yeah, join. <laughs> not joining watch shit. Not joining shit in Korea. I didn't. Nah, uh-uh, huh? I wouldn't. I wouldn't join in nobody there. My wife. <laughs> my, my wife joined me, so I didn't have to join anything else. Let's just put it that way. That shit was scary <laughs> out there. Um, Holy. Man. Hey, dude! Uh, if people want to find out if you're ha- find a new watering hole, where can they go to to keep track of you? I'm probably going to say something about it either on Untapped. You can find me on there as Del Noche, or I'm going to tweet about it, and I'm Del Noche. Or no, sorry, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. What about you, dude? Uh, well, of course, you can always find me uh, on Twitter. At Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And if you w- listen to your podcast at accelerated speed, that's. And <laughs> I also have a new project, anthonylemos.com. I've got post uh, pictures up there. I have made a few blog posts, and I'm going to continue doing that. So if you want to find some some. Input from me, some less uh, less structured inputs, but um, less structured, less frequent, but less constrained because they're not just on Twitter. And I refuse to use Facebook for anything other than what my wife tells me I have to. Yeah, cruise, right. cruise on over to anthonylemos.com and uh, enjoy some of my photography and some of my thoughts. Yeah, and uh, the photography is brilliant, by the way. Uh, really, really wait, uh, uh, people are, you're going to think I'm fucking around, but I am not, uh, you went digital. Can you repeat that? Oh, uh, Anthony uh, to check out your photography. I said your, your photography is brilliant. It's really good stuff. Well, thank you, dude. Um, yeah, like you literally went digital right after you said, something something I, I don't i don't even know it because it's like yeah. so so limos by the way is l-e-m-o-s so anthony limos.com a-n-t-h-o-n-y-l-e-m-o-s.com yep uh you'll have uh link links in the doobly-doo 
And um, yeah, for the show, you can find it on Twitter at Ritual Misery. That's been a fun feed lately. We've been getting tagged in some weird stuff. And of course, you can join oh, the conversation. Yeah. We can uh, just join the conversation on our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Hell yeah, you can you can join us for for post show conversation there. Um, also, you can find all the links to all of the things that we do over on ritualmisery.com, which you can also find a link to the New Year's Eve streamathon, which I encourage everyone to be a part of, which is a twenty seven hour stream on the thirty first of December, going into the first of uh, January. January. Um, yeah, 27 hours straight of streaming goodness where we raise money for Extra Life, which which gives money to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. It's a wonderful cause. It's a great, great freaking time. Um, don't be alone on New Year's Eve. Come hang out with the Diamond Club. Exactly. Uh, Jenny Josephson and uh, uh, Matt Flanagan doing a Tell It Anyway New Year's Eve yes! special edition. Bringing it back one time only. Yep. Tell it anyway. New Year's Eve streamathon. Amazing. Um, and the other, the other big kicker, the other huge thing that we discovered this week, uh, Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane are coming in hot, live on New Year's Day. Well, it's New Year's. Well, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, bringing in the New Year's for the Central European time zone. It's whatever's just before. London. I think it's. I thought it was GMT. Well, no, either no, way, it's the whatever. one. It's 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 twenty two thirty to twenty three thirty GMT. They will be live bringing in Goodyear Internet, a special one time show. Yep. So that's gonna be freaking awesome. I uh, cannot wait for any of this streamathon. It's all gonna be amazing, amazing streams. We are live every Thursday at seven PM Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music, which I just pushed the button for. And thank you for listening. For you, for me, for Kent, and for the streamathon kids that benefit and will never know we did it. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! Forgot my line there for a second. You drew it out as long as possible. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y